Welcome to Balmore, Battle Mage Captain. As far as our opening hand goes, we've got... We got one blue source, and if one of these is like a draw source, yeah, we're gonna have to ship this one back. So let's go and mulligan on this one, and yes, we will keep on this one. We have a way to generate some tokens, some value. And let's go ahead and put... Probably gonna want Resculpt on Braids, I imagine. We don't really want to get rid of... So we've got Impulse and Ops. So we need to put one card on the bottom. We're gonna go through both of those. I guess at this point, we'll just get rid of... Yeah, actually, we're okay with Resculpt. We'll, we'll find an answer, because I like potentially being able to get both of those done. So let's go and click OK. And let's go and get uh, Balmore pot back up, and then we can get that going in just a second. But yes, welcome to some Blue-Red Spell Slinger, some value plays. That's what we're trying to be doing today. And so let's go and lead off with... I guess it didn't really matter how we sequence this. So it's going to lead off with Island. And then anything else, we will pass the turn over uh, to our opponent. We're playing Balmore, Battle Mage Captain. Flying, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain trample until end of turn. Our opponent said, good luck, have fun in the chat. So we're tossing that right back over there. So there we go. Um, let's go and go for Opt. And uh, let's go for Opt. We're going to get a Scry and a Scurry and a little bit of Fever for one. Do we want a Vandal Blast? We didn't really see any fast mana, so we're going to put that on the bottom for right now. Academy Wall. That is actually very good. I'm happy to see that. All right, and we hit a third land, which is very important. So uh, let's go Bloodstained Mire. Let's go and crack Bloodstained Mire. Let's grab ourselves a Dual Source. Grab ourselves a Volcanic Island. Uh, have that come into play tapped, and then we'll be able to get Balmore down. And then we'll take a quick look at Braids of Risen Nightmare, the new... Uh, commander from Dominaria, so we'll see what's going on. All right, so we're going to grab Volcanic Island. There we go. Let's get down Volcanic Island. Let's go for it. And yeah, we're actually cool getting Balmore down because uh, we're going to get some sort of value from Impulse and different things like that. So uh, anything else, pass it over to our opponent. Playing its Braids, a Risen Nightmare. Get this popped up. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, or enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. And it's going to be tribute. Uh, each opponent creates a 1 1 black rogue creature token and then return it to the battlefield transformed. Uh, enters the All right, we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Just trying to. <laughs> Take that in. All right, so we do run into an answer for braids, so we will take that. Um, let's go and make the land drop for the turn. Let's go. And actually, at this point, what we're probably end up doing is going Academy Wall, uh, because what we can do is get some looting off of Impulse, and that'll work out. So let's go and swing it with the entire crew. That's going to be one and three. Uh, knock them down to 38. Yep, 38. And then anything else, pass it to our opponent. So we did cover braids. Let's take a quick look on the backside. So Echo of Death's Whale, uh, Flying in Haze. It's a spirit. Uh, enters the battlefield, gain control of all rat tokens. Whenever uh, it attacks, you may sacrifice another creature if you do draw a card. All right, so they're gonna be able to gain control of all of our rat tokens at the end of the time, at the end of the uh, the saga, which is next turn. And so, I mean, yeah, I mean, if they gain control of it, it's not the end of the world for us on this one, to be perfectly honest. All right, so that's gonna be weatherlight completed, uh, which is really cool, pretty cool. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I love the art on that. Let's see what we draw into uh, Commander Sphere. Okay, so whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, so we're looking at impulse. Um, let's take a quick look at Weatherlight. So it has four more Frexine counters on it. It's a creature in addition to its other types. Uh, whenever a creature you control dies, put a, a Frexius counter on it, then draw a card if it's seven more. If it doesn't, scry for one. And what is the crew on this one? Oh, it has to turn into a creature by just getting those counters on it. Okay, so we're looking at impulse to hit the land drop to get some value going, and I think I'm actually okay with that. So let's go Impulse, because they're gonna get our Rat Tokens next turn. And so let's get the Academy Wall trigger, let's get the plus one, plus one. Uh, so yes, we will definitely use that ability. We have to discard a, oh, that is perfect. So let's go ahead and discard at this point. We're gonna go ahead and discard Commander Sphere. Yeah, I think we're okay with that. And then we're looking for a land right now. All right, so we're gonna grab ourselves a land. Uh, those go to the bottom in any order. Get the land down for the turn. And just so we can kind of play around Weatherlight, because that's gonna be a, a spirit. Yeah, let's go ahead and destroy target artifacts. So we're, we're cool with that, because we're gonna get some extra value, some really nice board state value from this play. So we're gonna go for that. Okay, so we're going to go to our attack step. Let's go and swing in. Uh, that's going to be 3, 6, 9. That's going to be 9 coming across. Drop them down to 27. And then anything else. 
Uh, that should be it. So let's just go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, that will apply my affiliate link. That'll allow you to get some cards and help support the channel at the same time. So if you do use that link, much obliged. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, let's give a quick shout out to MTGO Traders. When you play Commander Online, they've got a lot of the new cards that have released and especially some of the new uh, commander cards that released. They finally released it on Magic Online, which is very nice. And then uh, last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to directly support cool content like this, there's a link down in the description below. Uh, but if you're keeping score at home, with Balmore in the sky, it is officially free time. So let's have some fun. All right, so they're swinging across for three. That's gonna drop us down to 36. And then we'll see if they did get in braids down. I think we'll try to keep our board state as is. And depending on what we draw into next turn, we do have Rabid that we can go for. I would love it if we hit a land, uh, because that puts us on Talrand and Diabolic Intent. Okay, um, because if we do end up getting a land, that puts us on Talrand and then being able to go for Rabid on something. And then that'll allow us to uh, get some good, uh, get some tokens going and take care of one of our opponent's creatures. So, but yes. If you're keeping score, it is officially free time, so let's have some fun. As far as what we're doing with this deck, this is just very, very standard uh, blue-red spell slinger. We've got a lot of token producers in here. We've got Talran, Stormkill, and Artist. Uh, we've got a lot of one-drops, two-drops, even just some of the, like, you know, tiny stuff, like Ops. So you can see where when we had those rat tokens out there, uh, just being able to go for something like an Opt or a Lightning Bolt or a Braid, being able to buff up the entire board... Um, that's exactly what we want to happen. That's going to be Sword of the Animist. Okay. And what we might end up doing is they go for the equip of Sword of the Animist onto Echo. Uh, then we will uh, probably end up popping that creature. So let's go and swing across for one. Yeah, let's do that. Let's swing across for one. So what we can do is if they get Sword of the Animist going, they're going to be able to get some lands going. Which is not the end of the world. If we wait, we're going to be able to go with Rabid in response to that Echo because that is a creature, and they end up with a 3-3, but I think we're okay with that. They make the land drop, then they just re-equip. Yeah, I think we end up getting down... Let's get Talran down, because if we get the tokens going, we have Curiosity Crafter. I feel like that's a little bit better sequencing, is that if we get down Talran, we rip into a land next turn. That kind of opens us up to where we can go for Curiosity Crafter. And even if we leave up the Rabid line of play, if they were able to get a land down and somehow swing across and get another thing going, I don't... I, I feel like we could have left it up if we wanted to, but now um, at least we're going to be able to get a Talran trigger on the back end. All right, so the swinging across for a 4-4, uh, it's going to drop us down to 32, and then we get to untap. All right, so we run into Brainstorm. So let's go and go for Brainstorm, see if we can hit the land drop. If we wanted to, we could just dump out Storm Kiln. But we've got Rabbit and Brainstorm to get some extra value on our side of the battlefield. So let's go for Brainstorm, actually, now that I think about it. So let's go Brainstorm. Let's get some value going. So um, we're going to have the Talran trigger, the Balmore trigger, and the Academy Wall trigger. So we're going to draw a card and discard a card. Dig through time. Uh, we're going to, yes, we do like that. And I think what we'll end up dumping is, I guess, Storm Kiln, because Curiosity is really going to hit it for us. So that's going to be plus one. We get some trample going. We get the brainstorm, draw three. Uh, put two cards back on top. So we'll put um, Adelie's back on top and then Otherworldly Gaze back on top. We do get the land drop down for the turn. Um, let's go ahead and go for... Yeah, I like leaving up Dig Through Time, to be honest. So let's go ahead and push in. So that's going to be three with trample. Nothing they can do about it. Two, three in the air. And then we've got Rabid next turn on Echo. I think that sounds like a pretty good plan. So let's go and push in. Uh, we've got five coming across. Drop them down to 23. And yeah, we'll do that. Let's do that. Let's go and pass the turn. Because if we end up going for Rabid on our opponent's turn, um, that'll give them a token, but it'll stop that Sword of the Animus trigger. And then with Dig Through Time, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of the graveyard. So we're going to be able to go for, through uh, Dig Through Time. And still leave up, I think, a Braid, which is pretty much going to be the only thing that we'd really want to kind of recast uh, out of the graveyard. So let's see what our opponent is tapping down for. That's going to be Sidisi, um, Undead Vizier. And then let's see what the Exploit trigger, who they're going to target. So you can exploit a creature. You actually don't have to target with the Exploit creature. So let's go... Let's go Rabid on Echo to stop the Sword trigger. I think I do like that. So let's do that. All right, so we're going to go for that. We're going to get the Academy trigger, that one. We're going to get an extra trigger with a Talran. 
We're going to draw, yes, we will definitely do that ability in Otherworldly Gaze, and then we'll go and discard Otherworldly because we can cast that out of the graveyard. So we're going to pop uh, Death's Whale, and that'll get them a Frog Beast token that they can exploit, and that still keeps us open on Dig Through Time. So, all right, so they're going to exploit, let's see, and they're going to search their library. So they are completely tapped out. And so what we're probably going to try to do is really crap, uh, crank in a uh, Dig Through Time. All right, so let's go Dig Through Time, one, two. Okay, so we're going to get an extra token onto the battlefield, and we're hoping, hoping that we might be able to grind it out with this Dig Through Time. Uh, two go into our hand, so we got Thirst for Knowledge, and I guess Adelie's Wizards you control, because we can dump that down. It'll be one, two, three, and then we won't have enough for Thirst for Knowledge. So I guess what we'll do is two cards in our hand. We'll put Thirst for Knowledge into our hand, and then we'll grab, because uh, Electrostatic does not have... Uh, well, actually, we can go for Thirst for Knowledge with the land, and that'll be the land for the turn. Actually, I, I kind of like Adelie, so we'll grab that. All right, so put those on the rest on the bottom in any order. If we can rip into a a land off the top, that would definitely be good. But we'll just... All right, so we run into Poppet Stitcher. All right, so we go for Otherworldly Gaze. We can go for the Flashback and Thirst for Let's go for Thirst for Knowledge first, just to kind of see what we're working with. So we're going to draw three. You're going to be able to loot. Let's get Town Ran down. Let's get the Balmore ability, Academy Wall, draw and discard a card. So what we're going to try to do is just stack as many um, Balmore triggers as possible this go. That way we can really kind of get that going. So yes, we're going to draw on a kid. Uh, yes, we want to draw with that. Uh, we're going to discard Chromatic Lantern, get the buff ability, get the token onto the battlefield. And then we run into a couple lands. So we're going to discard Flooded Strand, and then we will go ahead and discard Poppet Stitcher. Because we already have a token source out there. We get the land drop down for the turn. Uh, that's going to be Adelie's. Which is going to have haste. So we're looking at two. That's going to be... Yeah, we actually can't push past. So we got to fly in through the air. And we can't go for Snapcaster just yet. I guess we just go and drop in... If we're going to actually wait on Adelie's, maybe they're looking for a board wipe next turn. But either way, we'll have Snapcaster. So we've got Snapcaster on rabbit if we wanted to do that to pop a dc i guess let's just yeah let's just go and swing with adelies i'm cool with that so let's get that down this could be another hasty option so let's go and push in don't want to swing with talran flying 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 and then we got that coming across so that's gonna be a big chunk of damage right there um that's gonna be drop them down to 10 and then anything else pass the turn to our opponent so if we run into a board wipe it is a bummer uh, the good thing is that, uh, actually get that closed down. Uh, the good thing is that uh, we do have Snapcaster on the graveyard, so we can go through Dig Through Time again, grab a couple more different options, but they never go in Gauntlet of Power. I actually do kind of like this, because that's uh, it's not a board wipe, basically. And that's going to be Smothering Abomination, which is going to have flying. So we should be able to, oh yeah, there we go. All right, so we run into Prismari Command. So let's go Prismari Command. And we're going to go two damage to any target. And then we draw two cards and then discard two cards. So let's, if we end up going, let's say we go Snapcaster, Dig Through Time, Find a Land, and then Prismari Command. That should be enough to swing in enough damage. So let's go Snapcaster. Let's go Dig Through Time. We're going to get this going. One, two, and then we're going to go Impulse. And then we'll get rid of Poppet Stitcher. All right, so we're just going to get these triggers on the stack. We got the Academy Wall trigger. We get this. We got Talran making another token. And this is what we're trying to do in this deck, is just really generate a ton of extra value like this. So, yes, we definitely want to do that. And then we'll discard Arcane Signet. Uh, dig through time. We're looking for just a land. So we'll go and grab uh, Cascade Bluffs. And then we'll go ahead and grab an Offer You Can't Refuse. And we'll put those on the bottom in any order. We make the land drop for the turn. So we've got three... And then we've got, so let's just make sure we're looking at this. We've got four. Yeah, we've got more than enough in the air, and our opponent just tapped out. So a uh, good game to our opponent on this one. If something funny happens, we'll go for Prismari Command. Uh, we'll hold off on Talran, and everybody's flying in the air. So a uh, good game to our opponent on this one. This is what we're trying to do with the deck like this, is just get some good little value pieces going. Um, at some point, we could have got down Curiosity Crafter, and that would have uh, given us some extra combat damage. Not combat damage, some extra card draw. But... Um, you know, you can see how quickly we can buff the board, and that's even us not even doing Prismari Command 
and all that other stuff. Or like we could even set up a Prismari command, offer you can't refuse, different things like that. So uh, good game to our opponent. I'm glad we got to showcase the, the token enabling, the extra value, you know, something like Academy Wall, uh, being able to get an extra loot off of that. And then uh, running stuff like Snapcaster, getting some value plays out of the graveyard. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hey, uh, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.